not another. We bought nothing into this world and it is certain that we can carry nothing out. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, forever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn man to destruction and say, it's return ye children of men for a thousand years in thy sight but as yesterday when it is past and as a watch in the night thou carriest them away as with a flood they are as a sea in the morning they are like grass which groweth up. In the morning it flourisheth and groweth up. In the evening it is cut down and withereth. We are consumed by thine anger and by thy wrath are we troubled. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. All our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are threescore years and ten. And if by reason of strength they be fourscore years, yet is their strength, labor, and sorrow for it is soon cut off and we fly away who knoweth the power of thine anger even according to thy fear so is thy wrath so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. O oh, satisfy us early with thy mercy that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad according to the days wherein thou has afflicted us and the years wherein we have seen evil. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us and establish thou the works of our hands, yea, the works of our hands, establish thou it. And the people of God said, Amen. We have gathered today for the celebration of life in loving memory of Mrs. Michelle Lovette Lowes Baker. We have been given a program at the selection of the family. 
we will follow it as outlined. We will have an opening hymn by Mr. Robert Ward. Then we will have the reading of the scriptures by Pastor Eddie Bellamy. Then we will be led in prayer by Mrs. Catherine Woodson. We will have a solo by Mr. Robert Ward, reflections by Mr. Ronnie Kennedy. Then we will have words of comfort by Elder Alva Lawson, a senior associate pastor at the Bible Way Church of Atlas Road. If there be any necessary changes, they will come from the roster. We say to this family today, be encouraged and know that nothing has taken place that the Lord is not aware of. He's too wise to make a mistake. He's too just to do anything that is wrong. Be encouraged to know when life can no longer afford us a home here. And it cannot afford us healing and deliverance from what we face. The Lord has a better place for us. At this time, we will have our opening hymn by Mr. Robert Ward. God of all ways. Stood by my side, and he have always been my guide. So many times, when I was too weak to carry on, he gave me strength, he made me strong, and he have stood right by my side. God have always stood by my side. He have always been my God. Oh, yes, he has. When I was too weak to carry on, he gave me strength he made me strong, and he stood right by my side. Through many of heartaches and pain, through the storm and through the rain, Yes, he had when I was too weak to carry on. He gave me strength, he made me strong, and he have stood right by my side. Always, always, he never, never left me alone, no. Always, he have always stood by my side. And all, always, always, he never, never left me alone, no. Always, he have always stood by my side. Whenever we need. I just pray, for I know the Lord, the Lord will make a way, cause he have stood right by my side. Amen.
have so much to be thankful for, even in the breathing time. God gave us so many years with us. And we only had so many years to enjoy. But now you're really enjoying life because you're with Jesus. Amen. In heaven and glory is there. And we all come to him. I believe we need to be true to us. One, three, one, two, three, and that's it. To say to everything there is a season. Yes, and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to moan and a time to bend. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rent and a time to sow. A time to keep silent and a time to speak. A time to love yes, yes. and a time to hate. Yes. A time to war and a time to what profit had he that worked in that wherein he labored? I have seen the travail which God have given to the sons of men yes, to be exercised in it. He that made everything beautiful yes. in his time. Also, he has set the world mm. in their heart. So that no man, no man can find out the work what God made from the beginning to the end. Thus I have read Ecclesiastes 3, 1 to 11. Now I'll be reading the book of Romans. that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. Moreover, who he did predestinate, them he also called. And who he called, them he also justified. Yes. And who he justified, them he also glorified. Yes. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, yes. who can be against us? He that spare not his own son, uh -huh. but deliver him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Uh -huh. Who shall let anything to the charge of God uh -huh. be laid? It is God that justifies. Who is he that condemns? It is Christ that dies. Yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, mm -hmm. who also make intercession for us, who shall separate, who shall separate us from the love of Christ, mm -hmm. shall tribulation or distress, or persecution or famine, or nakedness or peril, or sword, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the sword. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that 
neither death nor life, nor anger nor principality, nor power, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which are in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Thank you. you know. So Father, you've taken her and brought her home with you. And we just thank you for that, Lord God. She's no longer suffering. Even though we miss her, we love her. You love her even more. So Father, as I pray, Lord God, as a part of this family, I ask you to comfort her. Comfort her mom. Comfort her siblings. Comfort all the family members and friends. And give them the strength to know that you're still in charge. When that great crowd shall gather 
And you hear those church bells tone just to feel that old acquaintance fare you well and goodbye. See, you know my body will be there, but my soul it will be gone cause i'll be rest stand in my home beyond the sky beyond the sky listen when those church doors open wide and they roll me down that aisle you know the preacher began to preach and the choir began to sing you know my body will be there but my soul it will be gone cause I will be resting in my home Beyond the sky, beyond the sky. One more thing. And when they lay me in my grave, with my face toward the sun, you know my work down here will be done. And my race, it will be run. You know I won't be there, I won't be there, oh Lord, I won't be there, cause I'll be resting in my home, cause I will be resting in my home, cause I'll be resting up there in my home. Beyond the sky. Praise the Lord, everybody. All right. Let's give an honor to God. We've been here to follow our lives. And um, it's getting me great honor to speak here on this home going from Miss Michelle Baker. Um, I haven't known her as long as many of you, but during a short period of time, I met a great community of people. Pastor Bellamy, Mr. Earl, Miss Michelle, and the rest of my neighbors. But something about Earl and Miss Michelle and this family stood out. They was caring, open-hearted, well-spoken, and non-confrontational, and non-judgmental, you know. And it has a lot to do about the character. I used to remember being out in the yard with Michelle, talking to her about her flowers and watching and planting doing her flower beds. And me and her would be there talking about that. She know all kind of plants, for one thing. She know she had plants that I couldn't even name. So, but just doing things like that. Um, and I heard another communicated, and it was just so real. You could see the realness in them, and, and the realness of the love. And one thing I liked about Miss Michelle was she would do anything she can for her family. Even when she wasn't feeling well, she always persevered to do the right thing. And she always, always gave me great advice, especially me, you know. And, um, and I miss that. You know, I remember one day when Mr. Earl was in the hospital, and it was on a Sunday, and I ran out there with her to see Earl. And during the ride, we had a lot of things to talk about. She was talking about Germany, how y'all y'all grew up in the net, Pat, how y'all grew up in the military, you know, and traveling. And um, but when we got to the hospital, and I seen her and Earl communicate about how she cared about him, how he felt about her. And they say it's something that stuck with me. And they had a little phrase. And Michelle said, 
Yeah, Ronnie, that's my pebbles. And they'll respond, yeah, and that's my rock. And that always stuck with me about them two. And I know y'all gonna miss her. And I only know in a short period of time. But she did touch my life. And I, I love, I'm gonna leave y'all with some healing words from Isaiah 41 and 10. But the Bible says, fear not, for I'm with you. Be not dismayed, for I'm your God. I will strengthen you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. So take heed to those words. And God will help you through these morning times that you're going through. We all has a cross to bear. It's just our turn. We all going to have to travel the same road. Amen. So we got to get our houses in order and be ready when our name is called. Jesus. And y'all lean to God and hold on to each other. My dukes, I know it's hard to bury a child, but God is going to strengthen you. He's going to strengthen all of you. Yeah. Michael, Kenya, Nanette, uh, Pat, Miss Kim, and her husband, her, um, the friend, and all the rest of the family members who I can't call name by name. But y'all, I would keep y'all lifted up in my prayers. And if there's anything I can do as a neighbor and as a friend, I would be glad to be there for y'all. And I'll be praying for y'all and trust in the Lord and keep your heads up. Gracious God, our Father, we bless you now. We give you praise, God. Even in this most difficult times, you said in everything give thanks. Because this is the will of God in Christ Jesus that concerns us. And dear God, that you are the God of comfort. And that you comfort us in all that we go through, dear God. And we lean not to our own understanding. But, Lord, we acknowledge you, God. God, be with this family at this time, God. God, this moment, God, just take a little time, God. Comfort right now. Touch right now, God. Encourage right now, dear God. And God, help them, dear God, to have a hope beyond the grave. God, this little time that you would just stop and let them know that you are God and that you are the God that never makes a mistake, God. You know the beginning as well as the end and the very present. We pray now, God, that every song that was sung, God, every scripture that was read, God, every reflection that God that was given, God, we pray, God, that the words, God, settle in the hearts of this family, God. Pray for this mother right now, God. Hallelujah. Because, God, we know there's nothing like a mother's love. Help her there, God, right now, God. Ah, God, these very few minutes there, God. Grant her the strength, God. God, to be encouraged, God. Pray for these children, God. Bless them right now, God. Pray for a partner, God. Bless him right now, God. God, we pray, God, for this community, God. God, we pray for this servant, God, that gave her life to serve others. Help us now as we come we are joined together in spirit in one mind God as we look toward the hills from whence cometh our help realizing all our help comes from you help us now God to speak your word that would encourage this family grant them strength and they will experience your peace. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen. Certainly, we honor the spirit of Christ on this glorious day. In spite of everything that you experience right now, family, 
this is the day the Lord has made. And the day that she transitioned, it was the day that the Lord has made. And we're going to rejoice. And we're going to be glad in it. Yes. We're going to rejoice. And we're going to be glad in it. Because we serve a risen Savior who knows all things. Amen. And he made everything beautiful in this time. As was read in Ecclesiastes, the third chapter. There's a time and there's a season, a purpose for everything under the heaven. God has a purpose, and hallelujah. And we serve a God that never makes a mistake. And even when we don't understand, I'm still yet going to trust in him. Hallelujah. Oh, we thank God. We thank God. We thank God. We thank God for our presider, Reverend Stanley Latson. Thank God for Mr. Robert Ward. For those very inspirational songs that he sung, he could have kept on singing and singing and singing because he blessed me. But I know that we have a time that we need to come in and share words with you. We thank God for Pastor Eddie Bellamy. We thank God for Miss Catherine Woodson uh, for the prayer. Thank God for each and every every one of you. Thank God for this 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 family. Uh, I counted and in, in honor, Miss Virginia that you had called me and shared with me the passing of, of your daughter. And you said to me on the phone, you said, Pastor Lawson, I don't know if you remember me. Miss Virginia, I remembered you. You had called once before in the passing of your husband, and I preached that eulogy. I reflected on the time that I came by the house, and uh, I was so welcome. Didn't want to leave, couldn't leave. As you and your daughters, as they shared with me about about your husband, how much these daughters loved their dad, and they would just kept sharing about his cars, the, you know, miniature cars that he would collect. And I was there, and I said, "I'm getting ready to go." And every time I get ready to leave, they start up, a, they, they they start a new story. <laughs> and so, what can be? Well, I said, I told myself I wasn't going to be there probably about 15 or 20 minutes. I've probably been there about an hour and a half. I was I was so welcoming. And so no, I I I never forget those moments like that. And so when you call and I, I heard the distress in your in your voice and you asked if I would do words of covenant, I said, sure I would be it, it would be an honor. And even when I called you several days checking on you, I could still sense the distress and just going through having having to make arrangements for for, for a child. You know, and I said, Lord, just help me to be a blessing to her so that she doesn't have to worry about this part and that I would just come and just share our words with her. So would you always in my prayers be praying for your family and pray for uh, the children. I thought about what I would share. Don't want to preach. That's not what I'm here to do. But to give words of comfort, words that would in encourage you. You know, because sometimes we get into that uh, that preaching's fit, I would call it. You know, we got, uh, 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 uh. but once we leave here, we don't have nothing to keep us. And so, but I just wanted to share a few words that would comfort, that would give you strength, and, and, and just and just trust God. Because in our times of grief, we, we have feelings. I don't care how safe you are. I don't care how deep you are. You still you still human. And we, and we still have feeling. It, it, and it doesn't mean that we don't have any faith in God, but because God made us that way. And the Bible says we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. But in all points, he was tempted such as we are, but yet without sin. See, he understands what we go through. Even at, even at the grave of Lazarus, when Lazarus had died. And he said, show me where he lies. And when he went to see Lazarus and those that were there said, See how much he loved Lazarus. And I can see how much you love Michelle. And I, can, I saw how much he loved you all. And so we, we, we understand that, that God understands what we're going through. It's all right to cry. All right to grieve and all right to mourn. And there, there, there are times, Reverend Latin, that when we're trying to put things together and we're trying to uh, do the service. You know, we don't have the we don't have the time to mourn 
correctly because we're taking care of business. You understand what I'm saying? And so, but now, now, Miss Virginia, now, family, it's your time. Now, even, even after today, it's your time. Yes. Wondering how we're going to do this and who's going to do that, who's going to give remarks and what song we're going to sing and who's coming out of town and how we can accommodate them. And so, after this, yes. it'll be your time. Yes. Have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about your trouble. He will let you know that everything will be all right. Everything will be all right. There's a song that goes that if you know the Lord is, is keeping you, what are you worried about? If you know the Lord is keeping you, you ought to sing and shout. Glory to his name. Everything will be the same. Only if you know the Lord is keeping you. You ought to sing and you ought to shout. Oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul. And all, bless his holy name. And forget not all of his benefits towards me. Hallelujah. We serve a good God. And we often say God is good all the time. And all the time God is. God be good in a time such as this. Because he is God. He is all-knowing, all-powerful, omnipresent. There isn't anything that happens that God has not already known about it. Already set, preordained in time, even before the very foundation of the world. There are things that are still in the atmosphere that hadn't came to pass yet in God's time. In God's time. There's an appointed time for every man. There's a time for each and every one of us, no matter how it comes, it's an appointed time that God has set aside. Aren't you glad that you have a time? I'm glad he took time with me. I'm glad he gave me time. Because oftentimes we want to, can I have some of your time? And time is so precious, Reverend Lassen, when we neglect to spend time with our loved ones. And time was well spent with Michelle. We had time. We had time with family, had time with children. She was a, she was a servant, as, as, as I read in her obituary, and I'm reminded of all the work that she had done and how, how she served and how she was patient. She had a gift to serve those that, 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 that were less fortunate than she was. I'm reminded of the scripture of Jesus. He said, Jesus said, the Son of Man, the Son of Man didn't come to be served, but to serve. That's, that's Michelle. She wasn't here to be served, but she was here to serve. Even in her passing, she had already made plans for organs. Still yet, serving. My God. What a, what a wonderful example, and we could learn from her life. She, she, she left us a lot. She left you a lot, family. And her living was not in vain. Hallelujah. Oh, I thank God. I thank God. I thank God for her. Thank you, Jesus. But I want to leave you with... This scripture, John 14, verses 26 through 27, and I got about five more minutes, and I'll be out of, out of your way. Just words of comfort, that's, that's, that's all. The Gospel of John, chapter 14, and we see Jesus here talking to uh, his disciples, and he's, he's instructing them of things to come. Jesus talked about it in John 14 and 1. He said, let not your heart be troubled. Do you believe in God? Believe also in me. In other words, he was saying that don't let what is about to happen trouble you. In other words, don't let trouble trouble you. Oftentimes, we get trouble that comes at us, and it troubles us where we are no good for anyone. But he said, be at peace. Don't let this trouble you. You will grieve and you will moan, but don't, don't, don't let it trouble you. I got this. I, I, I'm in control. I, I, I got this. And so he, he, he speaks these words and he comforts his disciples about his impending death, the kind of death that he would die and how they would even forsake him. But he said, don't, don't be troubled. In my father's house are many mansions. Believe in God, believe also in me. Don't, don't be troubled about this. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be all right. So he was preparing them for that day. And I believe that uh, even in Michelle's life, whether we knew it or not, 
God was preparing us for that day. God is a good God. And he doesn't want us to be surprised when we lose a loved one. But look to him and to trust him. John 14, verses 26 and 27, the King James Version. And it says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, and he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Jesus was leaving, but he says, I'm going to leave something with you. And the only way that you can get it is that I give it to you. This peace that I have, the world didn't give it to me, but the Lord gave it to me. Yes. Sermon topic is the peace of God. Yes. Isn't it wonderful to experience God's peace yes. in our lives, especially during these days and times, yes. especially during this pandemic? especially in selecting the next Supreme Court justice. Oh, but I heard the news, Reverend. Oh, I was troubled. I said, Lord, what's going on here, Lord? Oh, I was troubled. But Lord, I said, Lord, I, I, I turned the TV off. I didn't want to watch any more news. I said, God, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to trust you, God. The way it looks, I, I, I just don't see anything favorable coming out of this. But God, I, I'm going to trust you. And so I, I, I relied upon God for that peace. We need peace in this world yeah. on today. Peace is a much sought after commodity in the world today. Peace is a, as elusive as a vapor or smoke. Mm -hmm. Many would often say, if I could just only have a peace of mind, mm, just give me a, a, a little peace, that's, that's all I need. Yeah. And if it is not permanent, let there be peace just for a period of time. Family, I know when you first got the news, probably didn't experience much peace, probably didn't sleep well, probably didn't eat well. And you said to yourself, Lord, just give me a break. Yeah. Just give me peace for a short period of time so I can get myself together, so I can go forth and do what I, what I need to do. But after you've done all that you can do, you still got to live this life. Right. And you still got to have the peace of God that will lead you, that will guide you. You see, for the believer, Romans 8.28 comes to mind. For we know. Yeah. Ah, not, not, not what somebody else told you, but, but what you know for yourself. Yeah, yeah. That in spite of the transition of Sister Michelle, we know that all things work together for good yeah. to them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. God has a purpose for each and every one of our lives and what we go through and how we serve, how she serves. God had a purpose for her. Yeah. And she serves well. Well done. Yeah. Thy good and faithful yeah. servant. Webster defines peace as the state of tranquility and quietness, believing and trusting that everything is going to work out. But what Webster fails to tell you is who or what to believe and to experience this peace. Coping with the situation may be, tr may be trying to figure out what happened and trying to get answers. That's the human side of us. But you get no answers other than be still and know that I am God. I'm with you. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I am the great I am. Whatever you want me to be, I'll be there. Whenever you want me to be somewhere, I'll be there. If you need a situation to be worked out, I can work it out. Because I'm all, all powerful all-knowing and omnipresent. Isaiah 26 and 3 says, He will keep you in perfect peace, whose mind is steadfast on him. Family, if you want that peace, keep your mind on the Lord. Even when you don't understand, he'll keep you in perfect peace. He gives you that peace. Amen. It's not that you have a peace of him, but he gives you his peace. Isaiah 9 and 6 says, the everlasting father, he is the prince of peace. 
and defining peace, we just can't stop at what it is, but also with what it is not. Peace is not the absence of grief. It is not the absence of disappointment. It is not the absence of hurt or pain, but peace is the inner tranquility of your spirit and the reliance and a trust in God. Can we trust God now? Can we get over being upset? And sometimes we get angry, but it's all right. And I said it earlier that God understands all that we go through because he made us and he gave us feelings and he gave us emotions. Even when he was at the graveside of Lazarus, the Bible said he groaned in the spirit. The Bible said that he wept. And so if he can do it, then we can do it. We always remember Psalms 23, for the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. You won't go without anything. God has it for you. Jesus did not leave the disciples comfortable. Because weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. We experience the joy of the Lord because it is our strength. And I'll leave you with these three brief observations, and I'll be out of the way. Jesus spoke in verse 26. He said, peace was left with, with them in the world, but not of the world. Philippians 4 and 7 said, and the peace of God which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. The latter part of the verse, shall keep your hearts, means that he shall guard your heart. He has watch over you. Psalms 121 says, Behold, he that keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. In other words, the Lord is saying, I'm leaving, but I will always be with you. I've always got your heart. I've, I'm, I'm always on God duty. You know, we have a sin in the army. I will not leave my post until properly relieved. Amen. But God, he said, I will never leave you. I will neither slumber nor sleep. Nor sleep. Nobody needs to replace me, but I'm always there. He said, I leave this peace with you. Another point is that peace was given by, by him. Peace is yours, everlasting. You will have the comforting presence of Christ. As he says, I, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And then if you call on him, Isaiah 65 and, and 24, and it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. It's comforting to know and have peace that even before you call, he's already answered your prayer. He's, before you even get it up, he's already answered your prayer. He's already heard you. That should bring peace to us. And I know there are times when we, when we try to pray and see that like sometimes we can't get the words out, we can't pray, but he understands our, our, our groaning and our moan. He understands because the Holy Spirit begins to make intercession for us. So he understands even when you can't get it out. Ah, hallelujah. He understands what you're saying. And in verse 27, he said, let not your heart be troubled. And I said, don't let trouble trouble you, but rest in peace. That was given to you. Psalms 46 and 1. He said, he's our refuge and our strength. A very present help in the time of trouble. He is our refuge and strength. We don't rely upon ourselves. The Bible says, not by power nor by might, but by the spirit of the living God. He is our refuge, that place that we can go to. He is our strength. He said he'll never leave us nor forsake us. He sent his Holy Spirit, so he's ever abiding in us and with us. Yes. And I leave you with this scripture, 2 Corinthians 4 and 8, and you heard it. For we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. In our trouble, in our grief, we don't become despair because we have the peace of God that surpasses all understanding that will help us through this moment tomorrow the next day next week in the next month family rest in abide in the peace of God let us pray
Gracious God, our Father, we bless you. We thank you, God, for your word that, that went forth. God, you are our peace, our refuge in our time of need. God, this family, Miss Virginia, these children, this partner, they need you now. That which was with them, God, physically, is not there anymore. But God, the spirit of Michelle, the reflections of her life, God, the servitude of her life, God, Hallelujah. Still, it will always be with them. Comfort and let them experience your peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We now turn you back into the hands of the Levy's field home directors. God bless you, family. carry me home oh i don't have to cry no more i'm saying again i i don't have to cry no more no i won't have to cry no more you know when jesus comes to carry me home oh i won't have to cry no more one little verse now traveling through this land i've had so many ups and downs but one thing, one thing I'm sure of, that I am bound for higher ground. I got my hands wrapped up in the winding chamber. I got to keep moving on in my Jesus name. You know when Jesus comes to carry me home, oh, I won't have to cry no more. One more verse now. When I get to heaven, I'll see all of my friends there. But most of all, I want to see Jesus, yes. the one who died on yes. Calvary. And I'll see my Savior's face to face. You know, I tell them, good servant, you ran a good race. You know when Jesus comes to carry you home. Oh, I won't have to cry no more. Amen. At this time, it becomes our sad duty that we deposit the remains of this, our beloved sister, back to Mother Earth. For as much as it has pleased Almighty God to take out of this world the soul of our deceased sister, Sister Michelle, Yvette Lyles Baker. We therefore commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. John the writer said, write from henceforth, saith the spirit. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord, for they rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. Together in unison shall we all say the model prayer, the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to say. We know it as the Our Father's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. We'd like to take this opportunity on behalf of the Lyles Baker family Thank you, Reverend Lassen, Elder Lawson, Elder Stubbs, 
If all you have done to undergird this family during the hours of a relay, we'd like to thank all the participants on today's homegrown service. This family truly wish to thank you. To the friends and well wishes that come to join this family during these homegrown services, the last day with the family, I'd like to thank you for all acts of kindness that you've shown to them during these hours of relay. And they ask that you continue praying for them through the days, weeks, and months ahead. And to the Baker family, on behalf of our entire management staff here at the Legion Funeral Home, we'd like to publicly and sincerely thank you for allowing us to assist you with honor the life and legacy of your loved one throughout these homegrown services. We we'll now have the benediction. Following the benediction, we will have our recessional. We'd like to say to this family, due to the fact we are still practicing social distance, it is such a sad thing and we hurt because we can't love on you like we desire. But from our heart to your heart, we pray that God's blessings will rest upon you. Let us look to the Lord and receive the benediction. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever. And the people of God said, Amen.